All right. Um, sorry, my computer kind of lagged there for a bit. Um, yeah, so how, how's everybody, I guess? Uh, I haven't been here in um, the Fire Emblem in a while. Um, of course, I usually try to stick to whenever whenever I do summon, I usually try to summon uh, on camera. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, it's finally here. The uh, A Hero Rises banner is here. Um, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's good. Um, let's take a look here and see what we have. Um, so the rates are all uh, 3% focus, 3% off focus. So what, what what's good about there being uh, color sharing between the both of them, and, and, and Acris has already said this stuff, so I'm not like uh, saying anything new here, but um, the good thing about them color sharing is it's not like if you pull, like if you're going for Corin and you pull a, a, a Lin, right? You're not getting that Lin instead of the Corin. That Lin would have been something else, right? So that's kind of the way you can look at it. Is is you're not pulling if you if you don't get the one you want, it's not because you know oh there was another unit there. This would still be three and three, um, you know. So yeah, so you can kind of look at it as as, as gains in that way. Um, but I I don't know. I feel like yeah I don't know. It's just it's just one of those things to to consider. Mathematically, it kind of turns out that way. Um, but yeah, so you know, basically a lot of value here. The only problem I have with this, with the way that uh, AHR turned out, was for one, uh, I didn't mind getting um, dual Lin so much uh, because I mean, getting one copy would have been fine. Um, but it just kind of was annoying that she actually won the thing because um, I really would have preferred to have gotten one copy of um, Corin and then you know gotten one from here and there you go, a plus one merge at the very least. Uh, but it is what it is. Um, I think, you know, regardless of how the results, like, ultimately came out, um, you know, this is a pretty good banner for everybody, I think. Uh, oh, actually, it's the wrong button. Uh, in terms of Saros, uh, we have Dragon Wall, which is basically the only thing she has. Uh, of course, um, her as a good as a unit by herself is all right. Uh, she's pretty useful. You know, a seventh slot is, is no, like, basically, we have a team of units of your six defense core, adding one extra unit is probably never going to be a detriment, right? So just pulling her boosts your defense in that season. Just there you go, uh, kind of as, at a flat rate. Uh, you can kind of think of it that way. And that's kind of the way I, I just think about it. Now, given the way like movement works and all these other things, and like maybe you waste a dance on Saros instead of a more vital unit, that kind of can be a detriment. But in a lot of cases, just having another body on the board um, providing bonuses or just helping out um is generally a good thing so you can kind of look at it that way uh actually I, also for those of you can like, i guess you can't see uh I, I had to switch over to uh blue stacks because nox was being weird uh so you know it's a new sound profile and i you know i had to set all kinds of stuff up so hopefully it, uh, nothing's too weird uh but yeah uh what else let's see so saros is good uh, i'd like dragon wall because i just want to fodder it off to corin but um other than that, nothing too, nothing too crazy there. Uh, a lot of people like Duo Lin, but I've never really like. I don't know. I've just never been too enamored by her. Like, I just you know, she's just another unit to me. Um, there have been quarters in the past. There have been um, you know, of course she she does it better than anyone, right? Because not only does she have uh, Tailwind Shuriken, she basically she has the same thing that uh, Duo Byleth has, where she can she has a minus one special trigger on this and she's got really high speed so she can quad people where byleth cannot quad people uh the difference is byleth can win sweep people right um where linja can also swim uh win sweep people but she loses out the second set of attacks but either way she still doubles regardless so that's something to consider not to mention she also reduces everybody's defense by um by seven and then you know makes follow-up easier because the way byleth works she's, she's kind of selfish because she goes in there she does her thing um and then you know you basically have to dance that unit and do it again um but the other thing is on offense lynch is basically you know unstoppable because she can quad hit somebody dance herself quad hit someone else and then get danced and then move away and then she's safe and there you go you've lost about what um one you know 33 percent of your of your defense potential there just because of linja alone uh, and that's that's a huge that's you know it's pretty huge I think, um, but yeah so uh, I, I don't know I just don't like using her um, I've been using her for the Tempest trials just because uh, you know 
<laughs> I figured it'd be kind of fun. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know, I can't be asked. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if, if you know, this is a, this is a perfect place to plus 10 her. I think uh, Tacho did that, so, you know, there you go. Um, Dimitri, I honestly cannot be asked <laughs> regarding anything regarding Dimitri. He's very strong, um, absurdly so, uh, because of just like, I mean, you can see all the crap that's in this weapon. Um, damage reduction plus five to everything, special acceleration, just everything, just, and that, and then if, as if that wasn't enough, um, he gets all this stuff, like, just everything, like, it's just, he's just loaded, but he's just really, I don't know, I just, I don't like characters that are way too stacked like this, they're just kind of annoying to me, and it's like, oh, do I, do I want to run it? Eh, not really, um, which, he, he's kind of reminiscent of, um, uh, what's his name, <laughs> Bector in that way, where he's just really broken, um, cause Bector is just dumb, but, uh, this guy, he, he's in, he's in a similar tier of like, with, with more of, he accomplishes the same thing Bector kind of does with, with, um, you know, more effects, right? Bector is strong, but he's a little more simple. His, his weapon, um, it does what it does. Uh, he's got Ostia encounter and then he's got, um, you know, special spiral, which is annoying to deal with. Um, but yeah, so, uh, I mean, fodder in terms of fodder would be pretty good. The reason I'm talking about all these is cause uh since we're going to pity i'm gonna i'm not i'm not gonna blow all my orbs on this banner is basically what the point is i'm gonna go to pity take my corin and then just peace out uh see who and then see who i get along the way would you know that'll be pretty fun i think um but yeah so if i get him you know obviously odd tempest is going to somebody with sturdy impact um yeah so let's come over here and then lastly we got corin um i think I wanted to get Corin since uh, she came out, but I didn't have a lot of orbs back then, and um, she wasn't really a priority, especially because I was still working on um, Summer Byleth, making sure I had orbs left over for whenever she came out. Um, again, while I do want a copy of her, I'm only pulling on here because there's a there's a guarantee for what, as well as we have 40 summons to get you know a bunch of you know, hopefully at least a few five stars on the way to that 40. Um, get some good fodder and all that kind of stuff. So basically, she's great value right now. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see how we go, how it goes on, on the way to get there. In terms of fodder, she's actually one of the weaker ones because this encounter I have like multiples just sitting around in my barracks. Uh, and joint drive attack, while it's probably the best joint drive, the only time it's <laughs> the only way to be optimal with inheriting it, it would be to take the distant counter. And there's no one I have right now that needs the joint drive and the distant counter at the same time. Um, I guess. Uh, what's her name? The Ninja Hana could probably use this, but I already gave her something else in that C slot. So, um, and the and she already has this encounter. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's get in here and, and see what we got. So, like I said, uh, I only have about six seventy four. A lot of people will probably have higher. Um, basically, I kind of gauge my like, I don't know. Uh, I guess visible success based on um, like to, to Acherus and I think the last time I saw Acherus had probably about um, I think he's probably going to go into this with a thousand because he, he makes videos and sometimes the, the or you'll see the orbs there and I'll just be like oh that's kind of he's, he's a little bit ahead of me but you know that's kind of feasible you know it's not because like, Acherus only plays this game right and I, I play several other games at the same time so you know I'm, I'm okay sacrificing that little bit off the top that he has more than me to um to be able to play some other games right because like you know yeah if i can get 80 percent of the orbs that i can be getting um with only like 20 percent play time and then you know i can spend the other like 80 percent on other stuff then I'm, I'm i'm solid for that um in terms of game time right not not like real world time just game time but anyway yeah let's uh so like i said I think Tacho came in here with 1,500. I don't know if they were all free to play. Uh, I, I just measure myself to Akers because he's free to play. Um, I don't know how many uh, anyone else came in here with, but uh, yeah. So, um, uh, you know, pretty decent. Like I said, I'm just saving for uh, an opportunity to get like a plus 10 on something. Uh, like I said, we're going to pull all of these. Let's see what the first one uh, awards us here. Uh, of course, it'd be Lucius. Oh, actually, I have to go expand my barracks in a little bit. That's annoying. I forgot to do that before we started. Um, in terms of fodder, the best one to get would probably be uh, Saros, just because I like I'm already guaranteed a um, what's her name? I'm already guaranteed a Corin, so 
on top of that, it's just pretty good. If I were to snipe on all Kalilis, I think maybe I'd probably come out with a few merges on Corrin, but I'm not sure if I... I mean, sniping will get you more guaranteed of that unit, but um, it'll take more units, more uh, more orbs to get to the, the Pity, which at this point all I really want to do is get to Pity. Um, I'll actually have to go check my barracks. I'll be right back. All right, and we're back. Um, so yeah, I just had to go make a few manuals, and we're good to go. Um, I guess in terms of, I thought it was kind of funny that we got, um, what's his name, Reinhardt as the uh, resplendent hero. As much as I don't like Reinhardt, I really appreciate the fact that they, they chose Reinhardt for that. Because, um, I don't know, it, it's helpful for new players because, you know, if you buy the battle pass or whatever, I don't know, <laughs> the, the fate pass or whatever. If you buy it, that's pretty good value because then you get, you get one of the, the best units in the game, you know, very early on. Well, he's one of the better units when you're at lower levels, right? Once you hit higher levels, he becomes less useful, uh, though you still see him around in, in Aether Raids and, and such. Oops, I didn't mean to click that. Um, but yeah, so if, you, if you're starting out, you know, he's a pretty good choice. Uh, so there's that. On top of the fact that, you know, basically anyone who's already invested into uh, plus 10 Reinhardt, well, there you go. You got a few extra stats to, to sort of, you know, to play around with and, and, and make him better. Um, though funnily enough, he's, he's one of the few people, like, it's interesting when certain characters get these resplendents, because, like, not everybody is equally, like, it's not valuable for all of them. Um, because you get plus two to everything, and not everybody can use, wow, let's see if we get, um, any of the banner units here. Um, it's not useful to everyone, because, uh, not everybody could use a plus two to everything, right? Some that are more, uh, min-maxed in terms of speed for, like, well, some they're more ma min max in terms of like they drop speed for other stats. Getting a plus two to the speed isn't really that useful. Um, but Reinhardt, he's he's all right. Uh, he can use you know he obviously he can use the attack. So that's oh there's a Saros. I think we kind of expected that here in this circle at some point. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, if I get a second Saros, I'm probably just gonna fodder her off once I get the Corin. Uh, whether I want to actually just give it to to legendary Corin now, I'm probably just gonna leave her in the barracks for a while. Um, just because, like, it's not really that worth inheriting the shield wall over to Corrin, um right now at a plus one merge, right? Like, maybe later when she's, like, plus, you know, five or six, then it'd be more worthwhile. But right now, it's like, who cares, right? <laughs> she's going to get, like, 40%, you know, not even... She's not going to get a lot, a lot of damage reduction against a lot of people because her stats are going to be so low. But anyway, what I was saying was, um, Reinhardt's actually pretty good for that. Uh, he's got a decent bulk, um... He's not, you know, he's no tank or anything, but he's got decent bulk, and uh, his speed, while he's not like, again, he's not going to just outspeed people constantly. Um, and we got someone off banner. Oh, there's a four-star. I love I love this system, too. It's just, you get a four-star, it's a free, um, doesn't change your pity, though. We're already uh, kind of on the first, on the second summon, actually. Um, but yeah, so it's pretty cool. Uh, let's see what she has. I don't actually, I've never pulled this unit before, as you can see there. Uh, Weirding Tome at the start of Inflict Speed. Um, cardinal Directions. I don't really like the Cardinal Direction things. I mean, it's like, if you use it strategically or you're good enough, you know, you can. But I'd rather not think about it and just use, like, a Sabotage or something. So, uh, this might get refined into a Sabotage. I'm not entirely sure. Um, HP Res 2. Oh, well, this is interesting. This, I needed this for, um, my, uh, Tethys. And now I have it. So, there we go. Uh, yeah, I'm probably just gonna fodder her off to Tethys because this this skill apparently is premium because it's only on four stars though now five stars consider uh, it's only on five stars though now four stars considering the fact that uh, some of those five stars older five stars are indeed uh, in the four star pool so that's pretty cool we got a Saros um, IVs plus defense you kind of want to get rid of this uh, minus res because obviously uh, you want shield wall to be doing whatever it has to but like it's good that she's got a defense boon because her her res is really high and then you get your defense up and you're you're solid. Uh, attack probably would have been better because it's more important to secure kills than it is to uh, just tank through everything, but it is what it is. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Let's uh, let's keep going. Um, I, th I mean, I've said this in the past before, but I really do enjoy these banners with um, with pity because whenever you summon summon on them, it's like if I'm summoning on some banner, everything I get like that's not what I'm looking for. Um, on the way to like you know invisible pity or, or soft pity right uh 
it's just annoying to get them right <laughs> but here i know that i'm gonna get corn at the end so anything on the way there is it's just fun to see what you know random stuff the game decides to give me and, and um even though I, you know the other thing about this banner is summoning on all colors is pretty good because if blues show up then you have a chance to get the pity or you get you have the chance to get the um one of the banner units which is pretty good because those two banner units are all right for for one that's pretty good and then the other one i'm probably just gonna use for fodder because i really don't care about dimitri uh, regardless I, I don't know why i just like i hate every form dimitri comes in he's really irritating <laughs> like just looking at his dumb face uh, let's get these two colorless. I, I'm pulling on the, um, so I'm pulling on the colorless first or like the blue first, right? The banner colors first, um, because if there's a five star, I feel like there's a higher chance that there'd be a five star and oh, there you go. There'd be a five star on that color. And the reason I, I do that is because let's say I pulled Lynn here. My focus is 3.25. If I pulled Lynn here, it would not reset the focus for these circles here. So these circles also have a 3.5% chance of having a 5 star, right? And I pulled her first. But the counter towards the next increase, because they also they, they, once I pull her, it, once I pull her for the next ring, it's going to be down to 3.00, right? But if I pulled her first, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, and then in the next ring, I just pull 1, and then the, the pity um, goes over to 3.25, and it increases after that, right? That's why I'm pulling on the color ones first, because I... I get the feeling that the colors, the the banner colors are gonna have the unit in there. So I mean, it's it, it's not 100% accurate just because it's like the same. You know, there's, there could be a five star behind any of these equally, as you know. But I don't know. It just feels like it higher there. It'd be higher there. Um, unfortunately, we got a minus speed here um, plus HP. So I think I'm just gonna. I might just merge her into the one they gave us. Um, in terms of fodder, obviously, um, this is excellent here and we, and then you can, you can take all three of these Ryans and the, uh, Swiss Barrel 3. I don't know if I'm going to do that. Um, I, I don't know if I'm going to merge her either, but you know, this is really good fodder. It's just hard not to like, it's hard to really think about it. Um, if anything, I mean, it'd probably be fun to like take off Pala for a while and then just run, uh, Linja and, um, <laughs> <laughs> run linja and uh what's her name duo byleth at the same time because <laughs> uh, oh my gosh uh that sounds kind of annoying for anyone to deal with and like while pala can quad the thing the thing the reason i can't do that right is because i need pala there to counter um vector because while linja is pretty good um vector still just like destroys her um and vector can't really it's not always guaranteed to destroy pala um, especially right now, when, when, once I get a dive bomb, um, well, well, not dive bomb specifically, once I pull that, um, colorless to barn, uh, it'll be pretty solid because at that point, I, not only do I have the, um, not only do I have the dive bomb, I'll have the, uh, uh let's pull here. Uh, I'll also have the heavy blade four, which would be pretty good because now she's quadding Vector and he, before he can counter attack, right? But just from the heavy blade alone, she's already doing 20 true damage. Theoretically, right? As long as you get your attack higher than his, which that's a whole other thing to deal with is, you know, you're probably not going to... You, you may or may not get that. Uh, I got this guy. I don't know who this is. <laughs> uh, three star Lex. What is he? Axe Cav? What is he? What weapons do you have? This guy looks like they were Splendid Reinhardt. It looks kind of weird. Hey, he's got attack defense push three. That's pretty good. So yeah, it's pretty good fodder. Um... It doesn't have any... Oh, it's got an axe. Let's see. Grants. Defense plus five. Yeah, that was a huge speed uh, reduction. That's kind of interesting. Um, he gets dual attack on both phases, so that's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it might he might be usable when he gets a refine. I don't know who's going to be using him now, especially just because... Five, two... I mean, if you're min maxing, it's fine, right? Minus five to speed and, and minus five to um, to res ain't no big deal, as long as he doesn't care about any of those stats. But yeah, um, to to sacrifice like ten stats, hey, we got an away. To sacrifice like ten stats to get like four defense or whatever that was. I think it was four. It might have been five. I think it was five. It, it's kind of overkill. Uh, basically, a Wayne for those of you, uh, if you pull him, 
Uh, I don't think we'll have the same luck, but uh, if you pull him, uh, he's got uh, Blue Flame, which is the only thing he's got. Um, this is kind of eh, and uh, all this other stuff is kind of whatever, like Wrath 3. You can get that in plenty of other places. <laughs> um, but yeah, Blue Flame, uh, it's a pretty good special. Uh, it's I think it's it's probably on the same level as, like, uh, what's that? Um, <sighs> Ruptured Sky, there we go. In terms of, like, kind of strength to, like, um, SP cost, obviously. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. Uh, of course, it, it does take a little longer, but in terms of da raw damage, um, I think Blue Flame probably might beat it out. I remember looking at Blue Flame and, and realizing that it's like a really, really strong uh, skill. So we're at, we're at 30. So two more rings and we're, we're solid. Hey, let's see. Hopefully we get a Corrin in here. I'd like at least one uh, one more one more merge. Well, one merge on my Corrin. It's Anoka. <laughs> Anoka's like one of the few units. Uh, there's a lot of these units I don't know. Like the silhouette, I can't really tell. Um, but Hanoka, obviously, she's got that giant ring back there, which is kind of interesting. Um, what I love about these four star things is they they break they give you a free four a five star, um, without breaking your pity, which is awesome. So that's pretty cool. Um, she'd be pretty interesting for a a, a flyer ball. She gives out three uh, three attack to everyone on your team. Um, and she's got dual effectiveness, but the problem is it's like you basically only have flyer effectiveness because. The only tank anyone's using on offense is going to the only um, armor anyone's using on offense is Bector, and Bector's got his um, armor weakness removed. Um, but her mobility is insane. She has flyer formation plus she gives everyone else flyer formation um, around her, which is just ridiculous. Um, but yeah, the only problem is she's just like I don't know. She she doesn't secure kills well enough, and that's kind of all she does. She's just very supporty, which you can do that with other things, right? So like you know. Camilla is just a tanky, basically, you know, the second tankiest <laughs> anchor unit you can use behind Ashnard, but, uh, you know, like, you take Minerva, who's also very tanky, but very fast, and also just hits really hard. You've got, like, um, you, know, you know, Pala, or even, you know, uh, Est is really good for that position, or um, who else? There was another one. I don't know, but there's a lot of other people who do very specific things and very... Um, useful things to your team comp where it's like oh just having a ranged like dual effectiveness unit isn't the best because like now if you're running yeah i don't know there's a whole lot of effectiveness in this game that isn't very useful because you don't see a lot of like you don't see a lot of flyers on offense other than linja but linja the thing about linja is she gets over that flyer weakness by just like pveing your team right so she'll go in there like snipe everybody and then leave and then you didn't have a chance to do anything right uh, here, you can just kind of pull all of them, so I guess I'll pull those at the end, because uh, I'm going get, to get, gonna get the pity at the end of this. Um, right, but there's no one using flyers on offense, right? So flyer effectiveness, who cares? Second of all, no one's using armors on offense unless they're Bector or they're so strong they're going to get over that armor weakness, um, aka, what's her name? Edelgard, um, you know, she's really strong, right? Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't know, in, in general, that's just kind of like, the way I look at it is, is, a, per good, what? purgatorial prince. I kept wanting to say purgatorial, <laughs> like um, for those of you who play Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, he's actually <laughs> pretty bad. Um, yeah, he I don't think he has any good fodder, does he? I mean, him as a unit's pretty bad. Um, oh, actually, yeah, this is this is pretty all right. Uh, I don't know who to give this to, honestly, though. Um, I have to think about that one. Um, but yeah, just, you know, that's all he has. Warding stands for reprisal. Uh, this, this kind of whatever. I don't know. I just, he's just not good. Uh, but there you go. I got warning stands for fodder. Uh, come on. Hopefully we get Corin here somewhere. I wanted a plus one Corin at, at least, uh, yeah, it'd be nice if I, uh, got one. <laughs> and lastly, here we go. Come on, let's see what we get here. I was gonna say too, um, like before we pulled uh, this guy to destroy our pity, I was gonna say after we get this forty, which I'm gonna, it's gonna be a Corin. I think I'm just gonna pull till we uh, reset the pity, but <laughs> already reset the pity with this guy. So uh, there we go. Uh, and then lastly, we'll uh, we'll get our uh, Corin. 
Uh, Corrin actually is very beneficial to get her at a um, uh, a neutral IV just because she's so like she's just a huge stat ball. Um, I don't know why I'm like letting that play. <laughs> I already know uh, who it is. Uh, so here we go. For, finally, my first copy of Corrin. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's go back here. Uh, and then the pity's gone. Uh, I do wonder, I feel like, I don't know. I wonder why they did just like 100% pull a pity here. Uh, put a, uh, like, just, just like every 40, right? I, I forgot what banner did that. Wasn't there a banner that like the pity, the 40 counter reset every single time you, you did it, right? I don't know. I, maybe I'm just high. Um, but yeah, so that's cool. Uh, I guess now if the summoning's over, I'll probably just like add some stuff on the end uh, about... Um, What's going on? Why there's no videos and, and just kind of like an update, a, a little bit of an update. Um, so yeah, if you if you stuck around, uh, I guess for you, there's not. I don't know if there's all that many of you who do. Um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of Aether raids, which is basically the primary content I used to um, do for this, as, as along with summoning, which I'm still, which I, I'm still probably going to do summoning videos uh, going forward. Um, there's just not a whole lot of like other content to do because that like i said i don't do arena so that's not really interesting um i don't live stream so like you know if i live stream i'd probably just do my arena runs or my uh aether age runs every day on on there anyway but i, I just like make one video and then ship it out um but in terms of uh aether raids um it, there's not a whole lot for me to show because like when I when I was doing when I was uh, making videos before, the idea was to uh, for those of you who saw the Epic Seven one, it's kind of similar in, in vein to that, um, to show people that like you can make it to the highest tiers of of Aether raids with like suboptimal choices, with like quote unquote bad choices, um, right? And that that was kind of the idea back then. Now, unfortunately, I can't really do that anymore. Like, kind of. And it was kind of a show by example, right? I wasn't going to sit here and like kind of discuss a lot of the stuff. And I, I would show my defense and, and stuff like that. Um, but in, in, those, in, in that sense, uh, that was kind of more of a, a show by example of like, look, you can be successful with suboptimal picks. You don't have to sit around using characters you don't like uh, just to like keep up with the meta. You can, you know, you can use what you want. Um, once we, and, and that was all right because I would make it to tier 27 consistently. Um, and, you know, it's not that big a deal. It wasn't that big a deal. Um, but now we're at the point where um, I can still make tier 27 consistently, but that doesn't matter anymore. Um, I actually, like, I can make t tier 27 so consistent. Tier 28 even, which is the one after 27. You can get to tier 28, but you can't actually get to tier, like, 29 because there's, like, a humongous gap between there. Um, it's actually, I don't know. It might be possible. I don't know. I feel like it's impossible, but given like how huge i don't know the way they space that out is kind of weird um but anyway you can make it to tier 28 um very easily and so easily in fact can you make it to tier 28 uh that sometimes because and that's that's kind of the point i want to make is that like i i can't stay in the faults of heaven for very long um I, the la the the far the longest i've stayed there was uh two se was like two back-to-back -back seasons but after that i've only been able to alternate uh vault of heaven and then tier 28 and then vault of heaven tier 28 um, every so often, depending on like RNG of, of defense and, and offense and all that stuff, I'll be able to stay in there for two Vault of Heavens in a row. Um, but for now, it's kind of like, it's not consistent is the point I'm trying to make. Uh, but anyway, back to what I was saying about tier 28. Um, since I, I do spend some time going back and forth, tier 28 is so easy to reach that sometimes I'll forget to do Aether Raids, um, <laughs> you know, which is, is really bad. Uh, I, you know. Sometimes I'll forget to do uh, Aether Raids, and then I'll, like, still make it to Tier 28, you know, handily. Like, it's very strange uh, how easy Tier 27, Tier 28 is. I think some, some they gave us some point boosts or something like that. I don't remember. I, I can't remember exactly, you know, how different it was from before. Um, but, yeah, so Tier 27 is basically a joke now, and Tier 28 is also basically a joke now. Um, which is kind of interesting, because I remember back, uh, like, remember... We used to have, let's go over to um, current standing. Well, that's not helpful, is it? Uh, let's go to uh, check rewards. Okay. So back then, right, when you got to tier 27, right here, or tier, yeah, well, it used to be just 27. 
at the end of the week, you'd reset and get sent to 221. But if you didn't, well, I don't know if it was 227. I don't know. So for some reason, you sent back here, and then if you fall, if you could, oh no, if you couldn't handle a 221, you got knocked down to 220, and then 220 knocked you down to like wherever. I think. No, I don't think it knocked you down. It was just really hard to get from tier 20 to, to tier 21. Is my, my main point is that was breaking in because once you got to tier 21 or whatever, it was easy to coast from there because then, you know, as long as you don't get knocked down under 20, you're still going to start off at tier 21, right? Um, and that, you know, it's pretty decent because uh, from here to here, it's a two point increase in terms of grails, right? And then a you know, four point here. But after that, it's just one. Until you get to the end, right? You get to tier twenty, um, tier twenty-eight, which gets you five, ten, and then uh, four increase. So that's pretty good. Um, yeah. Okay. Maybe you can make tier twenty-nine. I'm not sure. I have no idea. Six hundred here. Yeah. No. Okay. I don't know what I was going on about earlier. Um, but yeah, it was interesting that, that 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 like this place is so full of sharks. Just like everyone wants to get into tier twenty-one, so you got to fight against everyone else trying to fight against you know trying to get into tier twenty-one. Um, yeah, see, so you can see the cutoff here because from, from 16 to like 20, you get no extra, uh, flowers and then you get here, you get two extra flowers, right? But anyway, the point being that, uh, getting into tier 28 is kind of a joke. Um, see, look, yeah, tier 29 doesn't give you any extra rewards because it's not really, there's no point getting up there. That's why. Okay. So you can see here, right? So, um, I can get to 30, 13, 800 easily, but like. This range to get into tier twenty nine, you have to get sixteen thousand points. I, I'm not like that's like that's you know two thousand two hundred extra points on top of that, right? So I don't know. I don't know if it's possible to get to tier twenty nine from tier twenty eight, and it, it probably doesn't mean anything because like the, the rewards are the same from here to here, and you start off in tier thirty one if you make it to tier twenty eight, um, or if you make it into um, make it into tier twenty eight here, you get thrown in a, into thirty one next season, and then. If you made it all the way here, no, here at least, uh, you reset back down to here or no, here, right? So, yeah, these, these basically don't exist. They're just kind of a separator for some reason. <laughs> anyway, point being, 228 is kind of a joke. Um, like, I, yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I can, I can like, forget to do Aether Raids and still, like, be in there somehow. Um, it's just kind of odd. <clears throat> but when it comes to tier, uh, tier 38 or whatever and higher... I'm actually like I can't consistently stay up here which is the reason I don't do a lot of videos and then you know going in there and doing a video uh oh let's find it well okay yeah I don't know it's just one of those things where it's like it's not that it's not that I want to show only victories all the time uh if I were to stream I mean I, I would stream it every day not not to hide like my victories or nothing but the the, the series wasn't necessarily I wasn't necessarily doing the series specifically to like um showcase winning or losing or strats or stuff like that it's just a, a a simple like example of like look you can make it up there and and that goal of showing people you can make it up there is no longer kind of like consistently possible um so that's kind of why i kind of you know stopped doing those videos and and you know in general my my interest in in aether raids kind of start is has been waning a little bit just because um there's not a whole lot of like interesting teams as much anymore just because we're like again you know i mentioned this a while ago and it's like really really irritating just dealing with cav lines like every day it's like i don't know it it's 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 strange because like anything that's not a cav line is pretty easy to just like stomp on and then you get to cav line and then it's just like you're just sitting there like trying to figure out how to deal with this cav line um yeah i don't know that's kind of like the dichotomy of like Either I see a cav line and it's just a nightmare because I got to deal with this cav line now, uh, or I don't see one and then any other defense is just basically fodder, right? <laughs> like, um, so that's something to consider. Uh, and it depends on your teams too. Like, if you're running a Bector team, like honestly, just everything that's not a cav line is fodder, and then even cav lines are just half fodder half the time. Um, so I mean that maybe that's my fault for for running a team that way. Um, but even even like running uh, Felicia like she stomps on anything that's not a cav line and even some cav line she does pretty decent against um so yeah that's something to consider um of course I'm still running Felicia I guess to, to show off a few teams here um Felicia and Vector are the two main teams I run uh I go into this team sometimes because people run um Duma and they run like other dragons now that you know Saros is there I don't know if she's on this season no she, uh yeah she is 
Uh, Saros is there too, so, you know, whatever. And then, you know, there's other dragons as well that people like running. Um, so that's having dragon effectiveness is just very powerful. And then having the smite is really good. Uh, and then on top of the fact that you don't always want the debuffs that she has, right? Uh, this is pretty interesting because this is pretty cool because now I can um, give her HP plus 4. So she's going to drop an HP point down to um, 56, but then she gets boosted by having 4 or whatever. So she's at 76 HP, which is pretty, you know, it's pretty solid. Um, specifically because Sudden Panic doesn't have higher, a higher requirement. Sudden Panic only needs them to have one less, one less HP than her, and then it triggers. Um, I think it's more important to get the plus two to res from here because the Tamari dagger actually has a, a higher requirement. Um, yeah. So basically, you get two here, you get to 46. Um, so that's pretty good. A lot of people are at running. So if you're at 46, basically anyone 43 and under... Uh, gets hit by her which you know it's pretty solid um but yeah sometimes you don't want debuffs on them because they'll have like rally traps or restore traps set up and all kinds of stuff like that so you know keep it keep that in mind for those of you uh so that's why there's two vector teams um unfortunately if they have like a restore trap or something like that uh, felicia just doesn't work because she needs the debuffs on them so i can't like if if that's set up there i just gotta throw vector in there and then have them kill everything so um yeah uh what else is there so this this team is just i, I just kind of put these here because there's no other teams i can run um in this season and there's no other variations of those teams that i want to run because uh in light season let's see can you see them no in light season um all of them are occupied because there's all kinds of different combinations of units i want to use um well not all kinds there's basically two uh there's norn and then there's um bulky but there's combinations of those two units I do want to use, so that's why they're all full. But here, there's not really a whole lot of combinations I can use. Um, but, you know, basically, they're just alternatives. So if, you know, if I ever feel like breaking out the uh, Cronia, she's here. She's not plus 10, obviously. Uh, she's also missing a very vital piece, which is, in fact, the um, the Fatal Smoke, which is just ridiculous on her. Um, I just, I don't have one. Um, but I'm, also, I'm just waiting for her GHB to come back because her GHB will give us one extra merge, which puts her up to nine, and then all I have to do is spend uh, some grails to get her last one, and she's a plus ten, and I'm you know basically don't have to worry about her anymore. Um, so yeah, so this is one team. I don't again, I don't use this team very often because whenever I would use this team, I may as well just use um, Felicia. Um, but she does like she doesn't do the same thing Felicia does, but. Uh, they are very similar, just because they're supposed to just go in there uh, and then vantage sweep everybody. Um, but Cronia does it a little differently, just because, like, you can go in there when they don't have, like... Basically, her advantage... I mean, she's not... I'm not taking full use of it, because I'm still running uh, Tethys here. But basically, Cronia's advantage is she can run in there um, and not have to worry about them being debuffed or not debuffed, right? Like, if they're running Restore Traps and stuff like that, I don't have to worry about them as much, because I can just go in there with her... Fatal smoke them. They can't heal or anything like that, and then basically sweep everyone because, um, you know, you take they're taking a lot of damage. Hopefully, uh, at that point, uh, especially as well as like, she's all she's very limited by the fact that you know you have to run savage blow, you have to run the fatal smoke on her. Um, you also have to realize that um, your bolt tower with her becomes like infinitely more important now, and. Yeah, so if there's like a comp that'll destroy the bolt tower, she's basically rendered moot. Um, you know, like I said, if you have no other options, you you know you, she could still do pretty decent because hitting everybody for seven, um, and she's a very strong unit. You know, at a basic level, you know she's gonna do all right, right? But you really want to be optimal, so you want to make sure you get as much uh, like AOE damage. You, you know, just want to secure kills. You don't want to like oh I missed that kill because he was like high you know one point higher health or whatever than I wanted him to be or something like that. So uh, that's kind of what that's about. Uh, then this team is kind of uh, a very, very long time uh, to get here, uh, just because I don't have a whole lot of grails to spend on Gangrel, but eventually I'd like to have a plus 10 Gangrel. Um, Gangrel, I guess. Gangrel, Gangrel. Um, but yeah, right now I don't have the 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 grails to, to plus 10 him, but once I do, he'll probably be used a lot more. Um, basically... He's an alternative to both Kranya and um, Felicia because that can make him tankier than both of them. Um, 
while delivering a considerable amount of damage. Now, Kronia, for me, Kronia's main damage prospect comes from the fact that she can Vantage uh, while Savage blowing people, so doing 7 true damage to everyone. Uh, and then running, being able to run a special spiral to get the glimmer off or, you know, the moon bow or whatever you want to put here. Uh, to just constantly be hitting people with a really high, really, you know, charge special on every vantage. That's kind of what she's there for. She's Like, if she takes a hit, she, she can kind of take it, but she's not here to brawl with anybody. If she gets in a fight, she's probably going to die. Uh, Gangrel, on the other hand, what I liked about him was he can actually fight a lot of people because... Um, once you get him a plus 10, he's got pretty decent base stats, but he's also got plus 4 to this whenever they're, um, plus 4 to everything whenever they're debuffed, uh, which of course he's a, a dagger unit, so if you take first turn, you're debuffing everyone within two spaces, which is solid. Um, but also, he doesn't have to rely on them doing anything, so um, Gangrel basically, like, he has 20% res, which is basically like this special, like, it, it, so we have a... Um, like Glimmer, right? Glimmer, or no, like Glacies or Iceberg, right? Glacies gets you 80% of their res as attack. Now, that's a four-turn special cooldown, right? If you were to reduce that to like a two-turn, that'd be... Because um, the other one's like 50% for three turns, um, I think, yeah. And then two turns would probably be something like 40 or 30%, right? Um, right, so two turns would be 40% uh, res... But like let's pretend he had like a one turn special that was res based. It would probably be twenty percent of your res, right? So basically, he has a special built into his weapon, which means that your special can be run as a uh, HP thing. Um, not only that, this actually does um, like true damage, which doesn't have a cap either. So that's pretty cool. Though a lot of the capped ones are probably being uncapped now because Nino lost her cap. Um, what's his name? Uh, Nisala is probably next at some point, which would be pretty interesting to, to see how that plays out. Um, but yeah, so it lets you run noontime and basically means that he can just constantly be healing while he's fighting against everybody, you know, being very tanky plus because of the plus four, um, as well as doing just true damage. And, and this is actually pretty good because if he doubles someone, this goes up to 40% because it's true damage on every hit, right? So, you know, there you go. Basically, you can either look at it as two 20% hits or just one 40% special charged hit that you hit somebody with, uh, which is pretty ridiculous. Though, as, it, as it is now, he's only doing seven on that, and then, you know, seven true damage times two is 14 as long as he doubles. Um, that's better than some just, like, better than Glimmer and Moonbow in, in some cases. Um, not always right, but in some cases, you know, it's at least 10 damage, which, you know, it's kind of a good metric to see, you know, whether something's decent or not or worthwhile. It's, you know, 10 free damage is no, is no joke. Um, but yeah, so, you know, eventually I wanted to run a Gangrel, but again, like, like I said, he's a, he's a very long-term kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that's it, I guess, basically, it's just kind of talking about, uh, where Aether Aids is right now and what's going on with that, so, um, for some reason today, my defense is actually, this season, my defense is actually destroying people. Like, two successes here, three successes, a loss, but I got caught, I caught, the, the lift loss control got that, so that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, a win here and then a loss here and it got caught by that so it's it's kind of interesting uh, you can see that I'm still very low tier today is in fact um, Friday uh, it's because I also missed the day on this uh, that's kind of the, the point I want to make was because my defense is not where it could be it's not like I've given up on this game um, it's just that there's a few things that I need to progress that are like I just have to wait for them to come back in terms of like you know banners and stuff like that to, to get some to get some to, to patch up some things that are, are problems with my defense. Uh, but once those come back, um, things should fire up a bit more. Uh, on top of the fact that, like, there hasn't been a whole lot of stuff to summon. Like, yeah, I don't know. There's just been, like, banners come and go, and they just kind of have whatever, and I'm just kind of not interested, and then they just leave, and, you know. That's why I have so many orbs. It's not because I've been saving them because I'm very, like, because I'm a good saver or anything like that. I have a lot of orbs because there's just nothing to summon on, right? So that's kind of something that, and it's not like burnout necessarily. I'm still playing every day, uh, except for the days I don't play. <laughs> I'm logging in every day, basically. But some days I forget to do Aether Rays for some reason. Um, but that kind of comes from playing. Um, it's kind of what happens when you're playing this and Epic 7 and Genshin. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so, like I said, 
getting right now, like Epic Seven, because I, I mentioned that earlier. I'm still playing Epic Seven, I'm still playing uh, Fae, but Genshin's really sort of uh, in a place where I'm enjoying it. Now, I just hit... Well, I don't know. I don't, don't want to go into too much detail for people who don't really care, but... Um, yeah, so if you're wondering where my time is going, it's mainly towards Genshin, but the thing is with Genshin is I can't make videos on Genshin, because for one, there's no PvP, which is the only thing I care about. Um, which is kind of weird that I'm still playing Genshin anyway. Um, but So there's no PvP, and two, there's no like... There's nothing for me to like i'm not at the point where i can give you guys recommendations or like guides or anything and even if i could give you guys i mean they wouldn't really be better than the ones that are already out there right so uh, there's really not a whole lot of point to doing that um but yeah so like i said like what am i gonna tell you how to build hotel like everybody already knows how to build hotel you just give her the crimson set witch or whatever and then you know you know hp pyro and crit chance or crit damage right there's not not a whole lot you can kind of Go in there and tell people, oh, you can run this, you can run that, or, you know, just, it is what it is. Especially because of the, the the way the gotcha is set up right now, too, is it's really bad. Like, gotcha is always, like, it's always kind of, like, bad, right? But the way Epic 7 and Fire Emblem have done it is, like, it's, I don't know, I feel like it's really good, right? Now we got pity systems, you know, we've got um, soft pities in place, you know, that are pretty decent. They actually, you don't have to, like, spend, you know... You know, multiple hundreds of dollars to hit, hit a pity you know a lot of times you can um but it never really feels that way uh you always get basically you always get enough in-game currency in this game that hitting like getting the units you want is usually pretty good as long as you save as long as you're not being too impulsive um and epic 7 is the same way like if you're saving your crystals and stuff and you know being optimal and just pulling for um you know not, not just pulling on everything you see or everything you want just pulling on things that you need or might be useful uh, you have enough to, to basically get every unit that ever comes out, right? As long as you're being steady and, and being careful. Um, given, you know, given a, a plus or minus on RNG. Now, if you have to pity every single one, uh, it becomes a little bit harder. But, you know, I've been pitying basically all of them for a long time now. Um, some I'll get dupes. Some I'll get, uh, not dupes, well, that's kind of the point. Some I'll get early and then maybe, you know, depending on how, or how early, I'll just get a dupe. I'll go for a dupe on the pity. Um, but otherwise, you know, if it's not worth summoning, I don't really summon... And then you, usually sometimes you pull things out of like random, right? Like every day, because you get a covenant summon every day. Usually you pull like a five star and there you go. That saves you one pity from one um, one banner when they come out, right? Um, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, the way they are now, I like their summoning systems. I like, you know, it's not a hundred, it's not really fair because, you know, you got to deal with RNG and all that stuff. But I, I kind of like the the attempts at fairness that, that's going on with uh, Epic 7 and, and Fire Emblem. Um the thing that bothers me about Genshin, and it's really annoying, and I guess it bothers everyone, is right now, where they are right now, they're very stingy, and they're very, like, I don't know. It's, it's very, it's a very, it's a summoning system that works very much against the player, and it's very much, it's very predatory, I guess you can kind of say. Not not 100%, but it's very predatory. Um, but that's kind of the way it is to start off, right? Right now, they don't have that many units, so they can't give you so many resources, because then... You're going to plus 10 all the units, especially whales. They're going to plus 10 all the units super fast. And then, and then what, right? And they got nothing else, right? That's kind of why they have to meter their, their resources, right? So they have to meter like, okay, so, okay, we're bringing back Venti. We're bringing back Child. And now we're going to put, um, since Venti on, on his own is going to sell, um, is going to sell gems. Um, he doesn't need any change, but Child is a little lower on that list. Uh, so let's put in a four star and have people summon anyway. Like whales are going to summon, right? To get the four star maxed. Uh, and then get a bunch of extra copies of child because they probably maxed child the first time you came around, right? Uh, so something to consider is that like right now, there's they don't have a whole lot of resources. But once we take it, you know, the game's been in beta for like a year. But, you know, I didn't really count that. I kind of like, let's wait till like the game is out for a year. See what kind of additions they make. You know, they're slowly adding stuff. Um, because a lot of people don't really realize like... Warframe was kind of like this a long time ago, right? When Warframe first came out, like a year into Warframe was was pretty bad. Like, if you look at, like, here's a good example for those of you who have played Warframe. Warframe used to not, you couldn't do the super jump, like that that double jump that you do na that, that you do now, like the bullet jump. They used to be like Excalibur's ability, like, and no one else could do that. All you could do was just jump around, and then they gave everybody that, right? So. And then on top of that, like back then, it used to like there wasn't there wasn't maps, there wasn't like a galaxy map, there wasn't it was just like a room that you would shoot guys in, and then maybe they were kind of connected, you know, they had more rooms and like you know, right? There wasn't a whole lot of map design, like the open world stuff that we have now is kind of interesting. I mean, 
there's problems that, that that we can get into, but let's not make this a, a Warframe video. Just one of those things where, like, take this and think about it like Warframe, for those of you who have been with Warframe for a long time. Now, the problem uh, that, that is there is people who are complaining aren't the kind of people who have the kind of patience for that. They're more like, this is the first time they've ever played a gacha game or the first time they've ever played a game that's, like, designed to go on for 10 years, the same way, like, Warframe is a good example where they, I don't know how long they've been around, what, like six years now, maybe seven. I feel like, I feel like I've heard about it in 2013, but I don't, I, that feels like way too long ago. Anyway, no, that feels a long time ago. I don't know. But Warframe has been around, I feel like six years, something like that. So what, six years would be 2015, something like that. I feel like Warframe has been around for a long time. And, you know, it only started getting like pretty interesting about, you know, I want to say maybe, you know, halfway through that time span, which is about three years ago. And now they've, after that three years of like, okay, we finally got somewhere interesting. They've been kind of coasting. So that's another problem. Um, but that, that's something to consider is that like, just kind of chill for now, like build resources, get, maybe save your, or if you can, if you can muster the, for some reason, I, I don't have like the, I don't know. I just don't like saving in, in, in Genshin just cause I know it's all like, like, I don't know. I don't know. Well, well, well that, that's something to get into for the Genshin video. But anyway, just just one of those things where it's like, consider, consider where Fire Emblem was the first year it came out uh, to where it is now. And like, you know, you'll see that that, that while uh, maybe maybe Fire Emblem was better than Genshin currently is now at, at the same kind of uh, referential time, time frame, um, know that Genshin can only get better from here, basically, right? So if you're not too satisfied with the game, but you kind of enjoyed it, Maybe leave it alone for a while and then come back later, you know, maybe, you know, six months, maybe a year and then see, you know, see what's out, see what's been released and don't let the like fear of like, oh no, I need to get the unit because, you know, you'll probably get them later, right? You get, you know, and if it, and if you, you know, if you don't, there'll probably be better units at the time when you come back, there'll probably be better units anyway, right? So that's something to consider because <laughs> power creep is, is an important part of, of keeping these games alive. Um, so yeah, I mean, you know, not much else to say, um. Good luck on your guys' summoning. Um, I don't know if I, I probably wouldn't go 100% on this banner, um, even if I had the orbs to like plus 10 a Corin. Um, I don't know. Because these, these, these Hero Rises have, haven't always been like that way, but I don't know. This one feels kind of like bait. It feels like they put a whole lot of like pomp and ceremony behind this one for some reason. Um, though they usually do. I mean, the I just, I just. You know, I'm thinking back to like the one with Altina, and it wasn't really. It was just kind of like, okay, yeah, there's another another banner. Um, but uh, this one, the fact that we all voted on it and we got the units that you know theoretically most people wanted are on this banner. Uh, you know, there it is. Just uh, hopefully you guys don't get baited, and you know something ridiculous comes out later. And 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 um, if you're gonna do this, be 100 percent sure that you know if, if you're gonna spend like all your orbs on here be 100 percent sure that if something better than everything that's on here comes out next you're not going to be disappointed you're just gonna be like okay cool that's something better but i didn't really care right um that's kind of the main thing uh, otherwise yeah i mean that's that's about it for today um i don't know when the next video will be i might have like a video um pulling for uh this banner over here but only i'm only going to use the five tickets here because um there's not a whole lot of reason not to um this banner is actually pretty good for fodder because uh let's see he, he has the sparring three which is a pretty good skill it's probably the bait basically it's the best um damage reduction speed skill we have currently um and uh there's obviously there's chris chris and chris uh, he's 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 excellent fodder because I actually like I need well for one I, I want one of these I already have one which I'm gonna give to Gengrel as soon as you know Gengrel gets to the point where he can use it. Um, here's why I kind of like Gengrel is he can uh, run close foil and then attack low attack speed which basically makes him tankier, um, and then you know he can still hit very hard. Um, but also I, I want another one to give to Brunya to try to like I have a I have a very fast. Um, Basically, I put a bunch of speed investment into Brunya, but I want to try to, like, run her with, like, um, attack defense solo or speed defense solo. Yeah, speed defense solo and try to see if I can make her, like, physically tanky enough to be, like, an all-round tanker. Um, that'd be pretty fun to, to, to try out, I think. Um, but yeah, so I just need another one of him, but I'm not going to, like, pull for any of them in particular. They're not, like, too valuable. I'm just going to use up the tickets they give me and, and 
I guess we'll, we'll use this up if I'm not going to do that. Let's see. Uh, let's get this guy. Come on. here. This is him. He's right here. Nah, it's another Lucius. <laughs> wow, what are the odds that I pulled Lucius on the first summon on both of these? Um, this is a pretty good deal. I mean, you get a spurn, a guaranteed spurn. The The thing is, I already have... Not only do I have one spurn already, um, you actually get a spurn from... Let's come over here. Uh, where is he? He's here somewhere. Here we go. You get a spurn from here. So if you, as long as you're just saving your other resources. Um, there you go. Uh, this is kind of one of those things that's interesting too about like this part is like this is the other reason I don't like use orbs very much is because like a lot of fodder stuff is already being implemented in here, right? So basically you just gotta save your other resources. <laughs> like there's a bunch of like back then, right? It's like if I need a disencounter, it's like oh I gotta summon on this banner, maybe hopefully pull a disencounter. Or uh, for those of you who remember, I was uh, summoning for special spiral to get to give to my uh, Kranya. It's like oh there's one right here, right? So. And I already, you know, I already pulled for it, so I already got it. But anyway, um, the point being that, like, because of there's so many other things and there's so many other resources that they're giving us, that's one of the things that, um, like, Genshin doesn't have. And, like, Epic 7 kind of has that, too, where, like, they give you a lot of free Mystic Medals. They give you a lot of free, um, like, pr uh, regular Sky Stones, a lot of bookmarks. Um, you get a lot of Gold Transmit Stones. Uh, you get a lot of uh, Galaxy bookmarks. So there's... If you're not, if you can't pity every banner that comes, there's also a lot of resources to help you get units outside of just like the main banner, right? Where here again, we have the same thing where it's like we have, um, you know, we have papers, we've got, you know, both set all, you got, we have three sets of papers, right? We got limited time for these for basically just for skills. Um, now we got the two normal ones. We've got um, heroic rails. If I can come over here, we got heroic rails, right? So there's a lot of other ways outside of the gotcha to get units, which basically just means that like you don't want to spend on the on the gotcha anymore very much, right? So for me, it's like you know, I don't have to worry about pulling for this or that because it's like, oh, do I need it? Well, let me go check my free resource. Oh, there it is, and then you know I don't have to worry about pulling that anymore. Um, of course, the 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 fact that the gotcha has a lot of premium stuff is never going to go away. Like I said, the colorless Tibarn is still irreplaceable considering he's got the um, the heavy blade four and the dive bomb. Um, but basically it limits down how much general fodder you need, right? Because like I said, now I don't have to pull for a disencounter, I don't have to pull for a special spiral, I don't have to pull for you know, etc. etc. I can just come here, um, you know, use up these resources and, and save those up there. Uh, one of the things with um and then you know, Epic Seven not only that, also has a bunch of like free characters that you can get from connections and stuff like that. There's like little missions you can do, and then there's specialty changes, which you know basically increase like the power of three stars that you just have lying around in your barracks a lot of um where we look at um genshin and genshin doesn't have these things like right? they don't have like it's just primo gems and that's it if it doesn't if, if you do a quest or something it doesn't give you primo gems you're basically wasting your time in terms of like wanting to get resources for the gacha um but like Sure, they give you Kea, they give you Amber, they give you Lisa and the Traveler. Like those are four. That's a, basically a four-team unit right there. Um, they basically they give you those four, uh, but you can't get constellations on them. You can't improve them very much in any way. I mean, you can get them, but like again, you have to go through the gotcha to get them, right? Um, and there's no other like side currencies. Now, there's Masterless Glitter and then like Star Glitter. I think those are what they're called. That you get them from pulling dupes or whatever. Um, so you have that stuff, but that again, that's tied to the gotcha, right? Imagine if you only got heroic rails. Imagine if the only way to get heroic rails was from pulling from the um, from the banners, right? From from using orbs. Basically, one orb gave you like two grails. Oh man, I shouldn't say that. I'll give them ideas, but but basically that's it, right? Like that's kind of where it is. Where it's like it all goes back to there. Genshin doesn't have a whole lot of like. I can invest my time to like get this other stuff free to play. So you know. Whales are, are burning through resources, buying everything, and then people who don't have those kind of resources don't have everything, and they don't really have a whole lot to invest in, right? Other than the, what they're given, right? They just got to play the hand you're dealt, essentially. Um, but yeah, so that's something to consider: is that like, just wait till like we get to the point where it's kind of like Epic Seven, where it's like, you know, we start diversifying our resource pool, um, because a lot of people get kind of annoyed when it's like, oh, here's a new, here's a new uh, currency. Oh man, that's annoying. We have to deal with that. But the, when you introduce new currencies, and I think Epic Seven, or an Epic Seven, um, Fire Emblem has been doing it right. 
uh, it gives you more avenues of progression. It's like, oh, I can't, like, if you have no orbs, it's like, oh, I can't progress anymore because I don't have any orbs to get new heroes, to get new skills or anything like that. It's like, no, you can, you can, you can make sure you're getting all your stuff done to get grails to progress in that manner, right? Or like, you know, there you go. Or if you don't have any grails right now, like I don't, uh, you can rely on the gotcha or you can rely on making sure you get all your papers down so you can start, you know, inheriting the proper skills away and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of what the, the value of introducing new currencies is. Um, it allows you to diversify, you know, that. And then they can give out more rewards, right? So back then I remember people complaining during the anniversary that, uh, oh, they used to give us 50 free orbs. I mean, where's that? Well, you know, now they, they, they give us less orbs for free, but they still gave us quite a few orbs for free, maybe like 20 to 25 in the summoning, daily summoning things, right? Um, but then they also gave us like a bunch of feathers, a bunch of flowers, they gave us a bunch of papers, like a bunch of grails, not only that. So it allows them to give you more diverse um, resources so you don't have to spend them all in the same place, right? Because if all they gave us is orbs, we're going to burn those orbs off and like, you know, 50 orbs is nothing, but 50 grails is a little more interesting, right? You get It's closer to getting a plus 10, you know, unit that you wanted. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just me. Maybe I just like like a lot of these grail units. Like, I mean, this I got so many grail projects I wish I could make, like... Um, Hannah, obviously I'm working on Hannah right now, obviously, uh, Patrine would be cool to make, uh, to get plus 10, obviously this guy, um, I already plus 10 my Minerva, I want to get him plus 10, I already plus 10 her, um, kind of working on her, I'd like to plus 10 him, but he's kind of like falling off, I'd like, to, I'd love to plus 10, ha um, uh, Pan, obviously I've, uh, I'd like to plus 10 her, so it's like, I don't know, maybe it's just because I enjoy the units that are in the Grail shop, that you know i like the diversity of it um but yeah just just kind of consider one of those things where it's like in, in genshin there might be a point where it's like we've got that kind of stuff uh, ready to go uh, but anyway like i said if you if you wanted to hear this stuff you probably would have stuck around and if you didn't you're not <laughs> right um but yeah so good luck for any of you summoning and hopefully uh, it all goes well um may you get many merges of whatever <laughs> units you wanted